four quick tips for model railroaders. Designing a model railroad building first steps. Hi modelers, I'm Chris the Modeler at ABR Model Works and welcome to designing a model railroad building first steps video, which is part of the modular model building system helpful quick tips video series. You know designing and scratch building a model railroad building for a lot of modelers might seem like a daunting task. Now like most things that challenge us, it's just a matter of breaking it down into bite-sized pieces and working your way through it one piece at a time. And once you do this, it becomes both an enjoyable and an easy process. And I'm going to show you and explain to you the steps that I take. Now the key aim of the modular model building system is to make the design process and the building of your building as simple as possible and at the same time giving you great flexibility in both look and style. Now if you're watching this video no doubt you have a few thoughts in mind about the type of building you'd like to build for your model railroad and of course that's the first step. Deciding the type of building and the style of building is one of the very first things that you need to do but also you need to decide on the purpose of the building. Now the aim of this video is to start the thought process and to get you inspired enough to give it a go. So start by asking yourself a few basic questions. Is the building to service the model railroad or is the model railroad servicing the building? Is it the main theme of the layout or is it supporting the main theme of the layout? Is it part of the railroad's infrastructure like an engine shed? a service facility, a freight depot, or a station? Or is it a supporting building, like a hotel, a shop, a service station, an office building, etc.? Now once you have an idea of the type of building that you need, and the purpose it's going to serve on the railroad, and the next thing is, will the building fit and not look out of place on your railroad? So how much space do you have to work with? Now when you're looking at the space that you have, so bear in mind what supporting items that you need to support the building as far as the scene itself is concerned. Now you need to find the right balance between the size of the building's footprint and the supporting elements that support the building in its scene. Now you have a building and its scenic elements in mind. The next question is, is it going to work with the other surrounding scenes? So Michael's Freight Depot has a concrete apron that the truck is parked on. It has a platform and a lot of accessory items on the platform itself. So it's not just the building. And all of those items combine to tell the story about what's going on here. The same thing goes for Doug's Repair Shop. Again, it also has a concrete apron. But on that concrete apron are things like 44 gallon drums rubbish bins, oil tank. So all of those little items all go to tell the story about what's going on in this scene. Lee's General Store is the type of uh, building that would fit on a street scene. And so the street scene itself will require a degree of space for things like the footpath and the laneway, etc. So those things need to be taken into consideration. Now, of course, if it's a background building, it's not going to need as much space. The depth is not going to be required. But of course, you need you know, a certain amount of length. And then there'll be items that probably are required in the foreground. Like if it's a freight depot, like the kit we're going to be building shortly, um, Slim's Warehouse, that uh, that building is only a quarter panel thick. So it's a very narrow building. But in the foreground, of course, you're going to have a railway line and maybe other items as well. So bear in mind those things, the things that go together to tell the story about what's happening in that particular scene. One of the key benefits of the modular model building system is that you can change your mind on all aspects of the scene and play around until you're happy with the look and feel of it. So how do you get inspired and come up with ideas on the style of building that you're looking for? Well, you simply do a Google search looking for photos and videos on the era in which you're modeling, which is exactly what I'm doing because I'm about to build a modular layout. And I'll be using the building of that layout to give you more ideas of how I go about designing not only buildings, but the rest of the railway as well. So stay tuned for that. Some of the model railways 
that are good to look at to get an idea about what I'm talking about are some of the narrow gauge railways that you see on YouTube. And if you look through the video itself, you'll see that there'll be a whole bunch of little scenes, little things going on, people cutting up timber, doing all sorts of little activities, and there'll be, you know, broken down engines and, and rubbish, and all those little bits and pieces go to support the actual structure of the building. So once you've looked at your layout and you've worked out how much physical space you've got to play with, that's when you start to look at the balance between the building size and the supporting elements. Now in the next video I'll be showing you a simple way of how to best use the space you have and how to get the balance right in the scene. So join me in that video by subscribing and ringing the bell. In that way you'll get notified when the video becomes available. I'm Chris the Modeler at ABR Model Works. Have a great day modeling and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.